Windows might be the most popular operating system on the planet, but it's also become synonymous with the inclusion of bloat. Using Windows on a handheld gaming PC is far from a good experience. It's barely an acceptable one. It's an OS built with a mouse, trackpad, and keyboard in mind, and it's barely touchscreen optimized. But that's all about to change. The ROG Xbox Ally and ROG Xbox Ally X are both due to be released on October 16th, less than a month from now. And there's also Lenovo's second generation Legion Go due to release at the end of October. Both will feature the Xbox full screen experience. This aims to not just offer an Xbox branded launcher, but a controller optimized experience that even reduces overall resource usage to allow that memory to be better allocated to your gaming experience. You're not going to be able to play every Xbox game in the catalog, but this has the potential to make PC gaming on Windows handhelds a much more seamless experience. It seemed unclear, at least to me, if this Xbox focused mode would make its way to all releases of Windows or if it would stay exclusive to certain handhelds. Well, the answer is here, and anyone can install and enable this mode on any device, with a few big caveats. Microsoft's Xbox full screen experience has the goal of being your all in one launcher with a focus on Xbox Game Pass. So even though Microsoft would obviously prefer you to buy games through their storefront, they also support automatically detecting games from other launchers for one seamless experience. This means when you're booting up your handheld, you aren't taken to a desktop interface at all. In fact, the desktop is entirely turned off, not just hidden. You'll get a full controller optimized interface and an entire experience with handheld gaming in mind, while still running Windows. This should mean it's much quicker to go from booting up your handheld to jumping into a game. Right now, this is available through Microsoft's Windows Insider program, which is basically their beta program where you can get new Windows features before they make their way to the general public. Before we get started, consider this a general disclaimer. You're going to be installing beta software. While everything should technically be fine, we're talking about installing a beta update of Windows. There's always the chance that you can run into weird bugs, issues, or just general instability. Make sure that whatever your device you're doing this on, you're comfortable with tinkering. Also, it can't hurt to make sure that if there's any files you don't want to risk losing, just back them up. With that out of the way, we can get set up. I definitely recommend getting a mouse and keyboard connected to your device because we're probably going to need the command prompt. I went through this process on both my Intel MSI Claw and my Z1 Extreme Lenovo Legion Go. The first thing we need to do is opt into the Windows Insider program. To do this, just go to the Settings app and click on Windows Updates on the left panel. Then click on the Windows Insider program and click Get Started. You will need to link a Microsoft account to join the Insider program. Once you do that, just choose to be part of the dev channel and reboot your device. Open the Settings app again, click on Windows Updates, and if you have been ignoring Windows updates like I usually do, you'll need to make sure you do all of your previous Windows updates before you can get to installing the Insider Program update. This process is really just doing Windows updates, rebooting your handheld, checking for updates again and again and again until you finally see the update for the Windows 11 25 H2. Once the updates are finally done, reboot one last time and then double check that you're actually on that version of Windows. You can do this by going to Settings, System, About, and check your version under Windows Specifications. If you're all up to date, then we can go to the Gaming tab in Settings. There's a very slight chance that you will see an option called Full Screen Experience. If you do, you've just won the lottery or you should go buy a lottery ticket because you're done. Just enable the experience, reboot one more time, and you'll see that you have that fancy new Xbox mode. But for the majority of us, if you don't see the Full Screen Experience option, we're not quite done yet. To enable the full screen experience, we need to run a tool and make some registry edits. You have two options to go through these steps. The first one is to just run a script that I created that's available on GitHub and it will do all the steps for you automatically. The second option is to do all the steps yourself. I'll walk you through both. If you want that automated script, my only slight disclaimer is that I'm more of a Mac and Linux shell script guy, so I had a lot of ChatGPT help hacking this one together but it should do everything we're doing here automatically. And it's actually what I used on my Lenovo Legion Go to get that set up. Just use the link in the description of the video to head over to my GitHub. Click on the code button and click on download zip. Extract the batch file and double click it to run. It will ask for elevated admin permissions and run through all the manual steps I'm about to walk us through.
After the script runs successfully, it will start a countdown before rebooting your device. If you forgot to save anything, you can exit out of the command prompt or press any button to cancel the countdown. After your device reboots, just head over to the settings app, go to gaming, and you should have the option for the full screen experience. Click into that item, choose Xbox as your home app, and toggle the option to enter full screen experience on startup. I actually had to do an update in the Xbox app before it would show up in this list. Reboot one last time, and that's it. If you want to know more about the steps from the script, or would rather do the steps yourself, we need to first download a tool from GitHub called VIVETOOL. A link is in the description of this video, and when you download the tool, just make sure you choose the Intel AMD version. Extract the zip, I chose my downloads folder. Then open command prompt as an administrator. Use the cd command to navigate to the VIVETOOL folder you just extracted. Then run this command. Hit enter, and then we have one more command to run. You can actually just hit the arrow up key and then delete the ID and type in this new one if you want. And hit enter. Both commands should say that they have run successfully. Next, we're going to open up our registry editor by clicking the start menu, typing reg edit, and choosing to open the registry editor application. From there, we're going to navigate to this path. If OEM doesn't exist, create it. Once we're in OEM, change your device form registry to 2E or 46 as a decimal. Close out the registry editor and reboot your handheld. After your device reboots, just head over to the settings app, go to gaming, and you should have the option for full screen experience. Click into that item, choose Xbox as your home app, and toggle the option to enter the full screen experience on startup. I had to do an update in the Xbox app before it would show up on the list. Reboot one last time, and that's it. If for some reason that didn't work, there are some other unknown caveats, since after all, this is quite a bit of a quirky way to get this experience enabled. The Reddit guide I've based this video off of mentions tweaking your screen scaling options, so that's worth a try too. Otherwise, you might want to head over to that Reddit thread. Now that we have everything enabled, we can take a closer look at the full screen experience. I'm also going to caveat everything with, this was a very buggy experience for me. My MSI Claw had some weird issues like notifications being treated as applications and totally interrupting the gaming experience. My Lenovo Legion Go freezes a lot, like really a lot. But that's where I actually discovered that the full screen experience replaces the blue screen of death with an Xbox green screen of death. So that's fun, I guess. So while I definitely experienced some quirks, I'm going to be overall fairly lenient and save my harsh criticisms for a deeper dive after we get an official release. The first thing that just absolutely wowed me was booting up my device. It was super quick and it was awesome to see that after logging in, there is just no Windows desktop. We go straight into the Xbox experience. This is of course with the caveat that these devices still have their built-in launchers and you might want to disable those before continuing. In general, the promise that we're hearing from Microsoft is that because the full screen experience is replacing the Windows desktop, this should result in less RAM usage and allow us to push gaming a little bit farther. Navigating around, it really is just the Xbox app full screened with a few extras added in. Starting with the home screen, I think Microsoft actually finds a good balance between surfacing your recent games, but also that hint of, hey, did you know you can buy games through here too? They have to do that, of course, but I appreciate that it's not huge in front and center. We can see that our games from both within the Xbox ecosystem and outside launchers are unified here. The Xbox games are clearly the first class citizens here. They have nice cover art, and each game has a ton of details when you click into it. Non-Xbox games pull in their desktop icon or just show a placeholder image. When you click into a game, there's just really not a whole lot there. I hope we can eventually get an even more integrated experience, or at least add our own custom icons to make non-Xbox games blend in a little bit more seamlessly. The next tab is Game Pass, where you can explore everything Xbox Game Pass on PC has to offer. It also gives you a quick reminder what plan of Game Pass you're subscribed to. Each of the games listed here will let you install the game, or let you know that you can actually just jump right in without even installing because of the cloud. I definitely prefer playing games locally, but having that option for cloud gaming right away is certainly a nice convenience. The next tab is for your games library. This is the full view of all installed games from any launcher. There's also a tab to launch apps, but it's strangely restricted. 
It's nice that it surfaces other launchers and you can actually download those game launchers without even leaving Xbox, but it's also extremely restricted. You can't add any apps. The only customization is the browser. It seems that whatever you have your default browser set up as will be the one that shows up under the Applications tab. But for now, it's totally restricted, so don't expect to add in your favorite emulators or retro game launchers. The next tab is dedicated to cloud gaming, which is pretty much just another way to browse games that are available through the cloud. Then finally, we have the Store tab if you feel inclined to buy games directly through Microsoft. I think this actually could be a better option over time, especially if you're pairing the handheld gaming experience with already owning an Xbox, and that's because of the Xbox Play Anywhere feature. Developers that opt into this service mean that you can buy the game for either PC or for Xbox, and you own it for both, making switch between systems incredibly seamless. Silent Hill F is a brand new release, and it actually has Xbox Play Anywhere support. I truly feel tempted to take advantage of that by buying it on my handheld, and then being able to quickly switch over to my TV and play it on my Xbox without any hassles. The last few tabs at the bottom are for notifications, an overlay for friends, and download status on game installs and updates. If we click on our avatar at the top left, we get into more settings. This is where we can manage our external game launchers pulling into the Xbox experience, manage our Xbox Game Pass subscription, and other pretty standard options. It's not really a full-fledged way to manage system settings though, and you will still find that moving to the classic Windows desktop will be a necessity from time to time. For example, I popped in a new microSD card so I can install some more games, but in order to let games install to that card, I have to format the card to NTFS. You actually can't do that through the Xbox experience and you have to go to the Windows desktop. And this is where I discovered a huge gripe I have with this Xbox experience, and something that I hope Microsoft will eventually integrate and fix. It's great that it's easy enough to swap over to the Windows desktop, but getting back to the Xbox full screen experience without a reboot isn't actually possible. The option to get back to the Xbox full screen experience is hidden in the game bar under the settings icon. That's where we'll find the button to enter full screen experience. And while you technically can just instantly go back to full screen, there's a message that pops up letting you know that if you don't do a full reboot of your device, you'll be missing out on the full screen experience optimizations. The Xbox interface seems to imply that you could quickly switch between both modes, but that just isn't the case. One feature that does persist between modes is the game bar. And it's actually a feature that I was the most surprised with because of its versatility. Game Bar is nothing new and it's already available on previous versions of Windows, but this time it actually integrates seamlessly with features unique to your gaming handheld. On MSI Claw, it detects all of the performance options that we have for all of our power profiles. I like that it brings those features in and integrates them directly into the Xbox look and feel. And then of course, there's launching into games. This is also a bit janky since the Xbox full screen experience is limiting what's running. Launching Xbox games are extremely straightforward. Just click on a game, launch it, and wait for it to boot. If you're launching a game that's through an external launcher though, it's a little bit more convoluted. Since we're using the device in the Xbox experience, game launchers like Steam don't start up on login. So launching a game could take a bit of time, since you have to open up Steam and then just wait for it to switch over to your launched game. But once you're in a game, the full screen experience fades to the background and you can just focus on gaming. Of course, there's caveats here as well, because not every game works as seamlessly. The MSI power profiles have a notification, and that notification kept being detected as an individual application. So when I'm using the AI mode, it just kept switching over to that application and then back over to the game and then back over to that notification. So hopefully they'll fix that eventually. If you do need to switch back to the launcher without closing your game, you can swipe up from the bottom of the screen to reveal the app switcher, which is also your escape hatch back to the Windows desktop. Launching certain games can also come with their own quirks. Some games launch in a little tiny like 100 by 100 screen size, and it's just too small to even try to navigate around to try to fix it. This isn't limited to external launcher games either. This actually happened to me for Doom, and Doom just wouldn't run at all. But games that do launch and play in the right aspect ratio play just fine. It's also worth calling out that I surprisingly had a better full screen experience on the MSI Claw than the Legion Go. The Claw has a button that was recognized by the full screen experience as the Xbox button, so I could quickly access the game bar. For the Legion Go, I have to either swipe on the screen from the left to the right, or use the Legion Go's overlay to just use the Xbox shortcut button. 
That kind of brings me to like my wish list of features that I hope we see in the full screen experience. And that first one is the ability to remap shortcut keys to any action. So these devices can really take advantage of all full screen experience features. The other wishlist item for me is seeing that Microsoft has seemingly set up the full screen experience to be not limited to just the Xbox overlay. It makes me wonder if we could see the MSI Gaming Center, Legion Space, or Armory Crate to be set to the full screen experience launcher instead. Even better, I'd love to see Steam Big Picture Mode as an option too. All this full screen experience stuff is supposed to be in service of not only providing a baked in more Xbox like experience, but actually seeing performance gains. So we'll use Cyberpunk to do some quick comparisons between the full screen experience and classic desktop mode. For the game settings of Cyberpunk, I'm using the Steam Deck settings, but I've switched the resolution scaling over to Intel XESS with the scaling set to auto. I ran this test several times, and in the standard desktop experience, I saw an average of 29 to 33 frames per second. Throughout the benchmark, it definitely dipped below 30, but we're getting a fairly locked 30 benchmark here. In the Xbox full screen experience, I saw maybe a little bit of performance gains. From here, I saw a average of 32 to 35 frames per second with a low of 30 and a high of 54. The results really don't represent too much in the ways of performance gains, but honestly, that isn't really what I'm focused on. I hope that it's something we see optimized over time, but for me, I think it just comes down to the experience. I would gladly accept the exact same performance we have today with Windows Desktop in return for a controller optimized experience, and that is currently what we're on our way to getting from Windows. Full screen Xbox mode on Windows isn't going to be some magic answer to suddenly making everything run amazing. It's a very imperfect response to what we've been begging for, and that's okay. It's the first major step to making Windows not such a pain to use alongside a controller as your only input device, and that alone is exciting. It's great that we can look forward to possible performance gains, or at the very least, just know that there's less running in the background. It's Microsoft's first step towards tailoring Windows to a particular experience, and I think its current form is a pretty great start. It definitely feels like a first iteration launcher. Navigating around the full screen experience can feel a little convoluted, especially because things are hidden either in different menus or the Xbox game bar, or just you have to swipe up from the bottom of the screen. It can just be a little bit confusing sometimes. But the inclusion of games from other launchers is what makes this experience viable as a true desktop replacement. Finally, Windows is taking steps to match the advantages of SteamOS. I'm here for it because any steps towards optimization is a good one and should make it a lot easier to decide between Windows and SteamOS, especially if you want to take advantage of Game Pass or just other games that are not supported on SteamOS. Microsoft really just needs to look at Valve SteamOS and just do that, pretty much exactly that. It's already an intuitive experience. It provides all the flexibility you need and pretty much keeps you from having to switch to desktop mode unless it's for very advanced settings. But those are just my thoughts. What do you think? Is this a positive step for gaming on Windows or is SteamOS still going to be the way to go? Does the full screen experience make you consider buying things through Xbox because of the Play Anywhere feature? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If anybody is a batch scripting expert, please feel free to put in a pull request for the Xbox enabling script. It'd be super helpful. And thanks for watching.